being a jack of all trades and doing lots of things, for me, this album is like taking a deep breath and focusing on what I really love to do, which is not only playing guitar, but just writing music, which whatever it is that I have at my disposal. And uh, I mean, yes, guitar is like the one instrument that I am semi-proficient at. I put a lot of effort into making sure it was about the music and not just about the guitar. <laughs> <laughs> you know, we're going to start with a laugh. GhostcultMag.com welcomes in guitar virtuoso and songwriter and composer Martin Gonzalez. How are you doing today, sir? Oh, thank you for the kind words, dude. I'm pretty good, man. <laughs> yeah, How about well, you? I mean, it's a statement of fact. It's your titles, I think, professionally. You know, I'm I'm great, by the way. Uh, you know, I, I don't always get to, you know, we focus so much on bands and um, a lot of people who do guitar oriented music as, as a solo artist, it's all very like shreddy, over the top stuff. But what I really, I, I wanted to start off, so your brand new album, Suspirio, is coming out. You have, uh, like I said, uh, you've put in a short span of time, you put together a nice little career. You've had band, you compose for video games and anime. Uh, your stuff is becoming very well known. But I think also, like, I really, what I like the most about this record was start at the top is that I feel like it's it's all about the songs and it's very well composed. And the fact that you wail on guitar is not an afterthought, but it's not the only thing. And I like that. Right. Dude, thank you. Thank you. Yeah, the um, the album was a crazy experience. <laughs> is um, As you were saying, the suspiro is actually like a big sigh in Spanish, right? It's kind of like, ah, oh, like just uh, a deep breath. <laughs> and I guess... Yeah, it takes part also because of what you were saying about like being a jack of all trades and doing lots of things. For me, this album is like taking a deep breath and focusing on what I really love to do, which is not only playing guitar, but just writing music, which whatever it is that I have at my disposal. And uh, I mean, yes, guitar is like the one instrument that I am semi-proficient at. <laughs> but then... I like what you said about not being just for guitar players or not just the guitar was the only thing uh, because I put a lot of effort into making sure it was about the music and not just about the guitar. <laughs> and and listen, like, you know, guitar has been, you know, we're going up on almost 100 years of electric guitar soon. And it's a fascinating instrument. I feel like just like piano, it's the first two instruments that everybody can begin on. They're incredibly hard to master. I know virtuosos who are still taking lessons 30, 40 years into their career. Like, I can't get good enough. I've interviewed quite a few legends and they all basically say like, oh, you know, if I don't play every day, I start to deteriorate. I feel concerned <laughs> about my skill level. And I feel like, cool, everybody's different. You know, everybody's got a different level Absolutely. of self self belief, but uh, you know, and we and we've been lucky to interview, you know, like I said, so, some song based guitar people. Uh, you would think like, oh, when I, I without having heard the album, oh, I think this is going to be like a whittly whittly whittly, you know, a lot of shredding, a lot of crazy over the top stuff. But I really like the attention to detail when you listen to these songs. Beside the fact that there's a lot of great guest appearances and fantastic singers they are written as like these top tier songs. If you had just put this into a band, doesn't sound like your other band, but if you had just put this out as a band, it would I wouldn't know the difference if it wasn't just your name on it. Oh, thanks, dude. Yeah, that, that means a lot, man. That, that really means a lot. Well, I listen with both ears open, man. That's what I try to do. <laughs> and, uh, you know, I, we try our best here to, you know, give everything a fair shake. But this is really cool. I, I really have enjoyed this. I listened to it a bunch. Everything about it. Let's get the, let's take it back for a second. We were talking offline about you went to Berkeley School of Music in Boston. I used to live in Boston. Everybody is sick of hearing about that story. But I was there for 10 years. I also was, I was kind of a musical little kid. I, I don't want to say a prodigy, but I was a gifted little kid. And I did a lot of different things. And I said, we were talking offline about the transition from student to professional is a challenge. It's a oh, leap. Yeah. It's a big leap. It's just like professional sports. You see people that ball out in college and run it back and then they get to the pros and they don't have it. So mu the music industry is brutal. It probably is the same percentage of people who succeed as probably sports, like two to three percent. So 
you know, obviously you had some talent. You you went to Berkeley, but Berkeley, I will say also, I'm uh, just acquainted with them. They do a very good job of trying to make sure you're well-rounded and not only great at performance. And I think, I think that's positive because it's hard out there. Right, dude. Um, yeah, Berkeley, Berkeley is a weird thing. Um, it's like, I feel like it's the kind of school that it's not necessarily the, the, the school what gives you what you need, but rather like what you make of your own experience. Not saying that the school is shitty by any means, like it's a great school. <laughs> uh, but obviously the experience depends on what you make out of it. And uh, also the major that you choose. And that there's like so many factors, right? Because uh, that people go for performance too. Like that there's people that go just to focus on playing their instrument which in my opinion wasn't the smartest way to go about it if you're going to pay that huge amount of money but <laughs> that's that's only a personal opinion right um then what happened to me was i graduated like in 2019 so the pandemic hit and uh i had like a bunch of stuff lined up that i was like okay like my my career has like a bright future and so on and as soon as the pandemic started like everything just went to hell <laughs> and uh, then I became like, okay, now I'm struggling. What I'm going to do? Like the big struggle before, like, yeah, sure. Now I'm a professional musician with, with like my, my degree, <laughs> but, but now what? And so just a bunch of like freelancing, meeting cool people, you start realizing that the music industry is really about networking and making friends. And then whatever comes out of it is out of your control. You just got to be yourself and, Put yourself out there however way you can in the most honest way and uh that's how you started to get gigs and then making music and the music gaining a little bit of traction somehow and so on so that's kind of my experience with the school and after the school but probably the first year was the roughest it was like 2020 uh, it was it was bad dude <laughs> It was tough for everybody, man. I'm so sorry. Uh, what bad luck. But at the same time, you seem to have persevered. The two best pieces of advice I ever got about music is don't be a dick. And the best ability is availability. You could be the most talented person out there, but it's also about showing up. And so that's the ha half the battle of getting and keeping a gig like a composing gig or a regular professional job is just be consistent as possible. Can always, it's not always possible, but you try your best. Um, before Berkeley, let's just touch on this for a second. When did you, because, you know, I'm just getting to learn about your story. When did you pick up the guitar? What was the first thing that inspired you to pick up the guitar? Was there a guitar, a song, a guitar player in particular that led you down this path or something else? So the, the, the fun story is um, I wasn't necessarily interested in music when I was a kid until I started playing Guitar Hero. <laughs> I feel like that was the game that I was like, okay, yeah, I, I want to I wanna play rock and roll, dude. <laughs> and then I, I have pretty amazing parents and they were always very supportive of whoever like path I wanted to take in life. So they started supporting me a lot with music. Then I started to get into like heavier music, maybe, I don't know, maybe I was like 12 or so, but like Linkin Park, <laughs> that was like the first time that I was like, dude, I, I want to make heavy music. After that, uh, as, as you know, as you, as you have your guitar with you, you, you want to learn like maybe like more difficult things and so on. And so you start getting into more music. I feel like the next band that I really got into was Megadeth and Marty Friedman and Chris Broderick and all the amazing guitar players that they had in their lineup. And I feel like that was the point where I was like, yeah, the guitar is my thing. I want to do this. And later on, when I was probably 15, which was like my breaking point of like, OK, yeah, no, I want to go to Berkeley. I want to do this thing. Um, I, I like I, I'm completely sure I want my life to be this was when I, I fell in love with Dream Theater, <laughs> which is like a meme in the pro community at this point, I feel like. <laughs> but yeah, I really like John Petrucci and uh, maybe Steve Vai, too. Uh, those were the two guitar players that I like looked up the most and uh, that probably have I've studied the most, too. Um, those, those were like my two bigger influences in terms of like playing guitar and I want to make music for a living uh, for the rest of my life. <laughs> and more in the side of like maybe nowadays, maybe when I was starting Berkeley and so on, um, like the Pliny and um, Intervals and all of those like prog solo guitar players that started coming out, Jacob Siteki, all of those were like more modern influences that 
just reinforced my desire to pursue this. It's really interesting at how uh, it's it's uh, interesting to me that like technical proficiency in guitar, we got a whole new generation of players. But it's funny, you know. Of course, you know, Dream Theater met at Berkeley way back in the day. That's how they formed right. in the late eighties, mostly from Berkeley, and um, you know, and many other bands have come from Berkeley, probably, and uh, or star players from other uh, you know across the genres, but. Um, yeah, it's really interesting to me. I feel like there's a value that's, uh, you know, finally, I feel like guitar players have always had an elevated position in in music, especially metal. Uh, uh, you know, Megadeth goes without saying, greatest one of the greatest guitar bands ever. Anybody you pick right, would be right. great. Uh, I, lo- I also personally love Marty a lot. I was just reminiscing about uh, not the first time I saw Megadeth, but like one of the best times I ever saw Megadeth was... Uh, the was ironically like the very first tour ever for Corn. Corn opened for Megadeth when their album was brand new. Uh, the, there's a big Corn announcement that happened today. They're doing a 30th anniversary show. So it was like nice. Megadeth, Flotsam and Jetsam, Fear Factory, who I knew, but they weren't big yet, and Corn in not in late '94. And I was like, man, and I'm sure you were not even bored, but like I was like, right, right. <laughs> right you were like not even thought of. Um, but it was like Marty. Dave, Nick Menza, uh, David Ellefson. What a, like, clearly the classic lineup of Megadeth for me and probably everybody. And uh, and Marty was un- unbelievable that night. He was insane. Just like, oh, both, dude, he's, both him and yeah. Dave were nuts. Uh, they used to do a thing where they would take each other's solos sometimes. Like, people don't know that Dave can also do some of what, not all, but some of what Marty can do. Obviously, Marty has a very distinctive sound and he just kind of sounds like him because of his really unique way of f- playing. But, right, uh, right. Anywho, that's really awesome, man. That's really exciting. And, uh, you know, everybody starts somewhere. Every band is a cover band. Everybody starts by learning other right, people's dude. stuff. And so <laughs> when did you start composing even before Berkeley? Were you already writing your own songs as a teenager? Yeah. So my, I guess my my love for music really always resided in, in writing music more than anything else. Like my, I was never into like doing big covers or anything like that like of course i learned songs and stuff like that but my ultimate goal from the beginning was to write my own music or just music in general like i i like to like be creative more than study for the sake of just getting better at the instrument what i really wanted to get better at was to like write songs um so in a certain way yeah sure i started maybe when i was 15 or so to write my own things and so on some of that is obviously (laughs) crap <laughs> and I never will show it to the world but uh, then there's like a bunch of recycled riffs that I've had since I was like probably my early teenage years that now are coming up in this album <laughs> uh, obviously reworked but uh, yeah that's that's when I started writing music and uh, it was actually while at Western Berkeley that I realized I also liked the entire world of like writing for media and video games. And I've always been a fan of video games and movies and TV shows and anime and so on. So it was like, this is also a super great avenue, um, especially if I get the opportunity to write music for something that I also love. Um, so I just started uh, like studying how to write music for film and or video games and so on. And uh, I, th- that was like my second found passion, I guess. <laughs> Nice. Uh, I have some additional uh, composing questions for you. But before that, I do want to pull out one more thing that I picked up in your playing. I wondered if you studied a lot of or any uh, any neoclassical or flamenco guitar, because I do hear a slight influence in there. Maybe it's vis-a-vis metal, because that's where a lot of metal players pick up neoclassical licks and, and patterns. But I hear like a little, you know, some of your clean sections and your layering feel like classical guitar to me in the best possible complimentary way i promise oh that's that's awesome man i i did study classical guitar like probably at the same time that i was like playing guitar hero (laughs) so this was like probably the first time that i like grabbed my guitar was yeah like a classical guitar like a nylon string guitar um but I really never expanded on it. Um, I knew like basic flamenco stuff and so on. Even though I didn't necessarily like study deep enough, uh, I always liked like classical guitar sounds and also flamenco music. Like I 
Paco de Miola and Paco de Lucia and all of that. Like I grew up listening to that. So I guess it's always on the back of my mind, like thinking of that and neoclassical. I don't know if this is like right or wrong, <laughs> but also one of my favorite bands ever was Symphony X when I was like also getting into guitar. So I, I took a lot of that style into my own playing. Obviously, I cannot do what Michael Romeo does because he's freaking insane. But but I guess like the the ideas or like what they do, I really grabbed onto it. And uh, maybe those two things influence what you might be hearing that I'm doing. There it is. There it is. What is the best video game soundtrack of all time and why is it Final Fantasy? <laughs> <laughs> all right. So, bro, it's so it's so hard. It's so hard to talk about it because there's so many different music and so many different video games. But I'll tell you what, I'll tell you my, probably my two favorites. So the first one was uh, Ori and the Blind Forest. I don't know if you know that game. Um, it's the, the composer is called Gareth Cocker and it's straight up just great, like symphonic chamber music. I don't know how to describe it. It's just, it's just a great, like very sentimental music. And the game is about like, this little blob thing that like loses his family and then he has to like go on go on a quest in the world and like he, he like his friends get like super hurt and so on so the music is always like very touching <laughs> and i think that was that was one of the games that was like oh my god i need to i need to learn how to make music for video games uh that one and then another video game that i really like no, let's, let's leave it at that. Let me think about the other one later. <laughs> no worries. No worries. There's there's actually no right answer. I just happen to really right. like, I happen to like the music of Final Fantasy a lot. I used to like my – I don't excessively game because I'm so focused on music journalism. But if I did, A, I would never leave the house ever again. The one game that right. I really love the most ever is like the little Diablo. I used to play Diablo on the PC or my phone. And Diablo has like a, like a very classic – like a – uh, medieval folk music sound, right? Like on purpose, like because it's like, you know, warriors and, and, slaughter, right, right. and slaughter of demons and devils and stuff. So it's great. And I used to love the, the guitar. There's incredible guitar stuff in there. I have no idea who does it. I'd like to find out someday. Let's talk about the record a little more. Um, again, I like I said, I talked about this uh, really great compositional, compositional style that's like reflective, more like a band. So I love these guest performances. Some of the singing on here is... Stellar. I know you worked with some of these artists before in other projects. Let's talk a little bit about the guests and how you chose them. Did you write with them in mind or did you present them songs and let them choose? How'd you work that out? Right. So, well, the, the singer um, is actually my wife. <laughs> so the singer is my wife, Elizabeth Hall. And uh, so we have, we also have a band together. The band is called Atomic Guava. But for my project, it went a little bit different than what it usually goes, right? Like in a band context, uh, I guess we all like connect into a certain topic and then she writes about it or she brings something to the table. And in this case, she also brought something to the table, but it was really meant to be something that I explained to her that I was feeling. For example, the song Goroboros, it's like she wrote the entire lyrics uh, and the concept is like also from her, but the nature of the song is mine in which I was like, I need a song about self-destruction, about how I overthink a lot of things and seem to be struggling taking decisions and whatnot and uh, kind of just like stop this cycle of like making myself feel bad. <laughs> and then she took that concept and wrote the entire thing. Um, so that's what is uh, like working with her is mostly like we live together too. So it's very easy. Just like one day you wake up, grab the guitar and then she's there and just like, hey, when I come here, right. <laughs> but the songs with vocals, I really wanted her to be in. Not just because she's my wife, like I'm pretty biased, but because uh, she's an amazing singer, I think. And also an incredible piano player. Then we... I have my friend Cenk Essen. He's uh, from Turkey, if I'm not wrong. <laughs> Please don't kill me if you see this Cenk. And then, but now he lives in London. And we met at Berkeley and so on. And we always wanted to do something together, but we never did. So as soon as I had a track in that was like already written, but I was like, mm, I need this dude. I need this guy to be on this. So he's, he's like a crazy jazz piano player. 
and he like that's why I had him in mind. I needed like a crazy jazz piano player for this tune. <laughs> uh, and so more than a feature, this is more it's more like a collaboration. I think like he put a lot of work on this song. It's not just like a section that has a piano solo. It's like he's on the entire tune. So it's also nice to to have a friend that is willing to do that with me. Then uh, Zach Singer, he's like a wind player, wind player. He plays like every type of sax that I know of. And he also plays the Sakuhashi. And so I met him because he did some stuff for me for the Ruby soundtrack um, that I worked on. And uh, from there we just connected. And uh, I thought he was like so, so good. Uh, and I needed a solo that wasn't a guitar solo or anything like that. So I was like, who, who do I know that plays sax so sick and, uh, like a friend of mine already so I asked Zach and then with Richard Henschel from Haken that was a different story because I was coming on it's not a friend I was coming on as a fan <laughs> um, so I reached out to him sent him the tune um, I specifically wanted him because Haken at the time was my favorite band like I was so into them they just came out with their album Fauna and I was super, super into it. And I was like, how cool it would be to get this dude who's inspired me to write this music right now. I asked him if he was down. Uh, and from there on, we just did a couple like exchanges and uh, he came up with the solo. He also recorded a video for it. So I'm really grateful. Overall, best vibes. And I, I couldn't believe that I actually got the one dude that I thought of that <laughs> I needed for this track. Uh, so yeah, that's that's the overall experience with the features. Nice. Three things. Uh, your wife is an incredible singer, straight up. I'll tell you. You don't have to. You don't have to brag about her. I will tell you. Her <laughs> voice is her voice is magical. Uh, Haken rules. No other notes. And it's always sexy saxophone time, right? It's always a good Do time. Do it for exactly some, for some sax, man. Like more. Everybody, all you met, all bands, more sax, mm -hmm. more rock and metal with saxophone. Pay attention to Billy Joel. He had a lot of sax in the 70s. And oh, all, those yeah. so all those songs are bangers. Mark Rivera is the mostly the saxophone player on some of that stuff. He's great. Um, just as we wind this down, I want to ask you a couple more questions. Um, in terms of your other composing work compared to this album, uh, you know, obviously they live in two minds. Uh, is there ever a chance you would do a non-game soundtrack style album or would a sound, would a game ever call for just songs that you could also use? Do you think there's a possibility that could pop up in the future? Definitely. <laughs> so I guess it's um, it's like two worlds that definitely connect and they interleave each other all the time. Like I wouldn't have been able to write some of the orchestral stuff I wrote for my own album if I didn't do the soundtrack, for example. So it's like kind of like an ability that I unlocked because of the soundtrack work that I did. And there is always going to be like that intersection between the two things, like the music I write now and the music that I will continue to write. It's always going to be soundtrack inspired because probably like 40% of the music I listen to is like soundtracks from movies or video games or anything like that. Like it's really not guitar music. <laughs> I mean, I have stuff that I cannot talk about it yet, but I, I have more like soundtrack works uh, coming up and, and for games that I actually love and I'm excited about it. But on top of that, I think my music could probably be used in also a game scenario or in a film scenario. It really depends on like the type of game and or show. But if there is always opportunity and it seems that I also like what I'm putting the music with, I think like I genuinely enjoyed the show and or the game i will always say yes <laughs> and so yeah dude uh, I, guess, I guess that's that's my verbal answer it's just like just make music that feels great and uh, if those two worlds interleave absolutely no questions asked nice work uh i always hear the big monies in commercials television commercials and movies so i was going to ask you just aside from games do you have a favorite movie soundtrack or composer ever Maybe I'm I'm thinking right now off the top of my head of not a movie composer but a show composer. That is a guy who writes for anime mostly. Uh, his name is Kevin Penkin. Uh, he's probably my biggest composing influence. Uh, he's wrote he's uh, he's written music for Made in Abyss, which is like a very very insane anime. Uh, if you like 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 heavy stuff to watch too <laughs> dude definitely watch that anime um 
and he's also done music for Tower of God and some some shows that I really like. But his music is like pretty crazy. He does like EDM scenes on top of like the most beautiful orchestral thing. It's it's crazy. It's like really hybrid music, but very original, and I really really enjoy it. Um, so I guess that's my favorite composer. I would say. Nice. And just for a last question, I always like to ask a wild card question to end the interview. Just kind of makes it fun on the way out. And so the one I have picked for you, if you could take a guitar lesson from any guitar player ever, living, not alive, whatever, one, one, spend a day with a guitar player and learn from them, who would you choose? Whoa, God damn, bro. That's, that's crazy. Can I say two? <laughs> say, there's really no wrong answer. You could say a bunch. <laughs> All right, all right. So I would definitely like a lesson with um, Jacob Siteki. And the other guy is Bumblefoot, uh, like Ron Bumblefoot. Uh, his approach to fretless guitar is something that uh, I need. <laughs> it's like there's no fretless guitar players out there that do metal. And uh, that's the one guy who does it. And he does it so good. And he makes that guitar like sound like no one else. I'm really interested in learning how he does that. <laughs> uh, Bumblefoot's amazing. We just interviewed him. So that interview is probably going to pop up right before yours. Uh, oh, he, he yeah. has <laughs> like 80, 89 bands he's in this year and at least two records out already this year and probably some more. Uh, he's mind blowing for sure. And, and he doesn't like act like a guitar hero. He's just like, I write songs and I also do crazy stuff on guitar. He does not like, he's so humble. It's wild. I would be very like, look at me, but he's not like that at all. Uh, so I'm a jerk and he's not. But anyway, you're also <laughs> not a jerk. You're awesome, Martin. It's really nice Thank getting you. to know you and hear your story. Suspiro is out on March 22nd. Everybody go pick it up. We'll link everything in the description where people can find you. And I wish you the best, man. It's fantastic getting to meet you. Thanks for hanging with Ghost oh, Cold. Man, thank you so much for the interview. You're also a really great vibe, man, and I uh, appreciate you.